Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. This is part two in my three part how to become a zookeeper type of series. So my last video I put out was how to become a zookeeper. This video is gonna be about interview um, tips, how to prepare for a zookeeper interview. So if you haven't already watched my last video, I recommend going and watching that. If you're interested in becoming a zookeeper, I talk about internships, college, um, volunteering, all that good stuff, how to find colleges for programs for zookeepers. Um, and then this video is just gonna be interview tips but first, because it is October now, I want to show off my phone case before I put it on my phone. This is my Arm the Animals case I got last year with my Iguana Arcadius on it. Um, Arm the Animals is awesome. You guys know I love Arm the Animals. Part of the profit goes back to helping animals and or wildlife, depending on which organization they donate it to. But they work with so many different organizations. And they're awesome because they do customizable things like phone cases, bags, stickers, shirts, leggings, and right now they have their Halloween stuff out again. So this case I did get last year, so they don't have the candy corns again this year, but they do have a lot of cute Halloween cases that you can put your pet's face on. So if you're interested in checking that out, I do have the Arm the Animals link in the description below. And if you use my code ZOEA10, you save 10% on your purchase. So, definitely recommend it because this is one of my favorite cases in the world. So anyway, zookeeper interviews. So you guys know I'm a zoo educator, I'm not a zookeeper, however I did have three interviews for a zookeeping position and one of which I got and the other two were um, for the same job. It was a two part interview and for the first interview I think there was like they narrowed it down from 79 people-ish to like 10, and then they wanted to narrow that 10 down to two or three for the second interview. So I made it through both interviews. So I've got quite a bit of insight on keeper interviews and how to prepare for them. So first things first, keeper interviews can be kind of difficult because it can be hard to get a keeper job and they wanna make sure that they're getting the best candidate that they can. So being well prepared um, is really helpful for me, after my very first interview, what I did was I grabbed a notebook, I wrote down things that I thought they were gonna ask me, I wrote down what my answer would be, and I kind of studied that for a little while. Um, that way, if I was asked those questions again, I would know exactly what to say. Um, now, the keeper interview that I had for the position I actually got offered was one of the easiest interviews I've ever had, um, but the other two for the job, um, for the zoo that I'm actually at now, were much more difficult. They were more what I've more what I expected from a keeper interview. So I'll be pulling from that more so than the other one. But anyway, um, think about like what questions you think they're gonna ask. Think about how you'd answer them. If it helps you to write them down to help you practice and remember them, go for it. Because that's what I did. Okay. So most importantly, know about the zoo you're applying for know why you want to work there not why you want to be a zookeeper but why you want to work at that particular zoo what do they do that is special look at their website look at their mission look at their goals if they have future plans look at that because if you refer to that in your interview they're going to know that you've done your research and that you know about the zoo you're not just applying for the job because you need a job you're applying for that job because you want to be at that zoo and you actually know about that zoo and that's pretty impressive now the other obvious thing is to make sure that you're ready with a question because at the end of your interview they're going to ask you if you have questions for them and you better have a question for them <laughs> never walk away from an interview saying nope no i don't have any questions have a question for them my go-to question is to ask them why they like to work at the facility that they're at not why they wanted to get into the zoo world or whatever what do they like with their job why that zoo because if I'm gonna work at that zoo, I wanna know that they love that zoo and why. Because that will help me know like why I wanna be at that zoo. Like you should already know why you wanna be at that zoo, but knowing why other people love that that zoo that have actually been there definitely helps. So, and then from the feedback I've gotten, um, people like that question. They like that it's personal and that you really want to know like about their connection with the zoo. Um, so it's just been a very good question for me. Um, I've used it in all of my interviews. So but definitely think about what you might wanna know, whether it's about the job, about the zoo itself. 
sometimes if I like blanked, I would ask about the zoo itself. Um, so like I, for my very, very, very first interview for a keeper position, I remember looking at their master plan and knowing that they wanted to bring in giraffes. So I asked about that to show that, you know, I looked at the master plan. I knew what they wanted to do and stuff. Um, so make sure you have a question in mind. Okay, now they're definitely going to ask about your experience. So think about your internships, your volunteer opportunities, maybe other jobs you've had. Think about all of that. Think about what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, what was your favorite and why, what was your least favorite and why. And remember when you're talking about your least favorite and why, you need to be professional about it and like legitimate reasons. Give legitimate reasons as to why you didn't like it. Not because the people were mean or you didn't like the jobs they were making you do or it wasn't fun. Like legitimate reasons. I did get asked this in almost all of my interviews or something similar was like, tell me about your experiences or tell me about your internships or I saw you interned here, tell me about that internship or what did you really like about this internship? What was your favorite internship and why and what internship did you not like and why? That was one I got. So obviously I said my um, sea lion and otter internship was my favorite. I felt like I learned the most from that internship. I felt like I got to be hands on and those keepers if you put in the work and showed you wanted to be there and you wanted to learn, then they reciprocated and they gave you opportunities to do super cool things and to learn more. And they spent the time with you if you reciprocated and showed that you wanted to be there and you wanted to learn. So I really liked that. And then I said my least favorite was my aquarium internship because I felt like I didn't learn anything. I felt like I didn't really get any unique opportunities. I was just kind of there doing the low man on the totem's pole, crap stuff that they didn't want to do and it was easier just to pass off pass it off to an intern rather than bother bringing an intern around with you and teaching them how to do things it was more convenient for them to send the intern off to the kitchen to diet prep while they went and did what they needed to do so i felt like i wasn't learning i felt like i was merely there to do things that they didn't want to do which to a certain extent you are supposed to do that as an intern you are there to make the keeper's life easier, but you're also there to learn the job, which I felt like I did not. So I didn't like that. They may also ask you about any training experience you may have. Um, I personally haven't done much training with animals. I got to feed our male sea lion at the zoo that I interned at a couple times, um, doing like the cues and rewarding and all that stuff. Uh, I did that a couple times. And then one time at the aquarium, I got to do target training with one of the penguins. So that was about the extent of my animal training. Um, so I am not very strong in that area of things. I'm very good with animal husbandry, very good with picking up animal husbandry and routines, but training is not my strong suit because not something that I've had experience with. Um, so unfortunately, that part of my interview, <laughs> I don't think went so well because I didn't have much to talk about or go off of. Um, but if you have training experience, make sure to talk about that. Make sure to be thinking about that and like what questions you might ask about that. Honestly, they'll probably just ask like what experience do you have with training or tell me about a time that you trained an animal or did training with an animal. Um, and they'll definitely ask about training in general. So know the different types of training, especially the types that the zoo uses. So something I wish that I had done before my interviews was look over operant conditioning again um, because that came up and I totally blanked because I hadn't like looked at that term and that definition since my freshman year of college when I was in Animal Behavior Ecology and Conservation 101 um, because I didn't take any training classes. So I hadn't heard that term in a long time and like all the types of training, you know, you've got positive reinforcement, um, negative reinforcement, all that stuff. So make sure you look at operant conditioning and the whole nine yards of training because that will more than likely come up in your interview. It came up in both interviews, like both of the interviews that were a little more of what I expected a keeper interview to be. Um, they both asked about operant conditioning and training. So definitely make sure you have a good handle on what that is and how zoos use it and types of training. That I can't stress that enough because that was something I struggled with in my interviews. Okay, another thing they'll ask you about more than likely is um, like your personal opinion on things. 
such as exhibit designs. So like I've been asked, my first interview at the zoo, she asked me like what was your favorite exhibit at the zoo when you visited and what exhibit did you not really like that you would like to see improved. Um, so I'd only gone to the zoo once and it was the middle of winter so I really had to think back a couple years, um, which is a little hard, but I managed. Um, but they might ask you about like other zoos. I was asked about like a zoo that I've been to that maybe there were things I didn't like. What would I change? So I thought back to a zoo with like a Burmese python exhibit that was totally bare. Um, and I went with that. So think about your experiences. What have you seen at zoos that you would change? What have you seen at zoos that you really liked? Um, and that you could refer to. And you went to school, they might ask you about your experience at school, what classes did you take, how will those classes benefit you with this job. And more than likely they'll ask you about animal enrichment um, because that is a very important part of what zookeepers do. So they want to make sure that you understand what enrichment is and why it's important. They might ask you for examples of enrichment, maybe some examples that you have done in the past or how would you enrich this animal. Uh, those types of questions or scenario questions. So have an understanding of animal enrichment. They might ask you how you will handle um, conflicts at work. I feel like most interviewers do. Uh, how would you handle conflict with a, another employee? How would you handle conflict with a supervisor? What would you do if you saw someone doing something out of protocol or wrong? Um, how would you handle that situation? Those types of questions are a little tricky for me. Um, I tend to be a leave your baggage at the door type of person when it comes to work. I don't like conflict at work. I don't like getting involved in things like that at work. I think when you're at work, you're there to work. I'm not going to bring my baggage with me or a bad attitude with me. I'm going to leave that at the door and I'll pick it up when I go home. I'm not going to do that at work. So I have a hard time answering those questions just because I'm like, well, I don't want to be like a tattletale. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to end up in a whole big conflict but you know if someone's breaking protocol so you really gotta think about what it is you would do what do you think is the right decision um, and how would you go about things so definitely probably ask you why you want to be a zookeeper another thing you definitely really want to look up is animal welfare versus animal rights they might ask you the difference between the two and i bs'd my way through that question i got it right um, but I hadn't looked that up again since my freshman year of college, so I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> so know the difference between animal rights and animal welfare. They might also ask you questions about caring for animals, like how can you tell if an animal is sick? How would you know if there wasn't like obvious, obvious signs that an animal is sick? How do you know if the diet the animal is getting is not benefiting it? How do you know if it needs a diet change, how do you know, all sorts of things, how do you know if the animal is stressed? Um, so scenario questions like that, showing that you know how to be attentive to an animal's well-being. Um, so, you know, looking for changes in behavior, looking for changes, I personally went with poop a lot, looking for changes in their fecal, um, in their fecal matter, looking for changes in behavior, um, stuff like that. <laughs> Are you a leader or a follower? Um, how well do you work in a team environment? A lot of zookeeping is working in a team and working with people. A lot of people get into the job because they don't like people and they want to work with animals. Yes, you're working with animals. Yeah, you're not like too involved with the public, but you're still working with people and usually a lot of people and in a team. So you have to be able to work in a team. But I also think it's very important to be able to work on your own independently as well. Um, so I said that a lot, you know, I'm, I work great in a team, but I'm also very comfortable and confident working alone. They may ask you about your future. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, are they really a zoo giving you a zoo interview if they don't ask you what animals you would like to work with? I mean, I guess if you're applying for a certain position, they don't do that. Um, I applied for just a general keeper position um, at a small zoo where everyone kind of does everything. So I obviously said reptiles, I want to be a herp keeper, that would be my dream. But they also have red pandas and I would love to work with red pandas. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, have an understanding of AZA, 
what it is, what it means to be AZA accredited. Um, they may ask you your opinion on AZA accreditation, um, non-AZA zoos and AZA zoos. They might ask you about a time that you went to a non-AZA zoo and what you thought about it, um, if they are AZA. Personally for me, it doesn't matter if a zoo is AZA or not. There are good zoos that are not AZA and there are kind of crappy zoos that are AZA accredited. So for me, it doesn't matter. Um, we have a local nature center close by that is an AZA accredited and, or not nature center, a wild center. Um, they're not AZA accredited. They looked into it, they would love to be, but it was so expensive to be AZA accredited and it wouldn't end up being worth it for them because no one up there even knows what that means more than likely. They're, they don't get as much business as like a zoo in a city. So they would be spending all that money and then not really making that money back. And then like they could just use that money towards the animals in the first place instead of on like an AZA accreditation, being able to say that they're AZA accredited. Because they're not a zoo, they're a wild center. So it's not really as important for them. And they would be better off taking that money and putting it towards the wild center and the animals. So that was an example of a good non-AZA facility and why I'm okay with not being AZA. They may ask you to describe some of your accomplishments. Um, they'll probably ask you in some form or another, like to talk about your strengths and your weaknesses. So that's part of where I go back to writing things down beforehand. I like to write out all of my strengths and all of my weaknesses. I usually do three and three because you never know how many they're gonna ask for. Um, but I feel like three is a pretty safe number. So I write down like three strengths, three weaknesses, and remember that you want your weaknesses to be beneficial towards your interview and your answer. Um, so as much as they're bad, they're like a good bad. So like for me, I said I was a people pleaser. I liked, like I had a hard time saying no. I always said yes. And then it would get to a point where I would be so stressed because I have so much to do because I just said yes to everybody because I never wanted to say no. I wanted to please everybody. So that was a weakness for me. My strengths, I learn super fast. I am very independent. I work very quickly, but efficiently. So it's really good when you're trying to teach someone all the different um, routines for the animals because husbandry is something that I pick up on just like that. Show me once and I'm good to go. So I can pick up on care. I can do it quickly but it still gets done efficiently and well. So that was a strength for me. Now, if you're like me and you have a lot of animals, use that to your advantage. So for all of my, well, no, for two of my interviews, because they were Skype interviews, I set up my laptop. Ooh. Sorry, just had a ladybug attack in my face. I don't know how bugs are getting into my apartment, but they are. <sighs> that was terrifying. I freaked out because last week I had a stink bug flying around my apartment. I think. It was big. So, if you're like me and you have lots of animals, use it to your advantage. When I did my Skype interviews, I set up my laptop with my reptile shelves in the background. So all you saw was all of my reptiles. And that sparked a conversation. It helped me answer a lot of my questions. They also turned a lot of their questions towards my reptiles, which made it easier for me to answer and it showed that I'm capable of caring for many animals that all have different needs. You have your own animals like I do, use that to your advantage. Use anything you can to your advantage. So yes, overall, just have a good understanding of what zoos do, how they do it, why you want that particular zoo and what that zoo stands for, and then all the basics. So if you, really think about the things I just said in this video, you'll be pretty good for a keeper interview. Those were all things that came up in my interviews. So hopefully those help you guys out as well. So obviously the next video is gonna be my Q&A where you guys can ask me whatever you want about becoming a zookeeper, about my college experience, about my internship experience, my volunteer experience, my job now as a zoo educator. You can ask me whatever you want, except where I went to school and where I work because I don't want to give out that personal information. <laughs> but anything else is fair game. So whatever you gonna ask me, you can leave a comment on here and ask, or watch for me to post it on Twitter and Instagram and leave your questions there. 
So next video will be the Q&A. If you have questions, let me know. And thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you for the next video.